Welcome to the ACC Panic Room alongside Lauren Brownlow. I'm Joe Ovias. NC State has now won their fifth in a row. It'd be really nice if that Virginia Tech game was happening on Saturday because NC State, with these wins, they might have gotten themselves back on that bubble conversation, Brownlow. Yeah, maybe. Although Kevin Keats, I think, tends to be in my camp about this where he doesn't really want to talk about it. I mean, you know, there have been past years where he did want to talk about it and was perfectly fine to engage and talk about net and whatever else. But this year <laughs> he's just kind of like, nope. And I don't, I, I don't know if it's even superstition. I think it's just because he understands that what got them here is not worrying about that. But it was clear in post game. Uh, Cam Hayes talked to us for a bit and, and they're thinking about it. They understand. So, yeah. You know, the players, I think, are thinking about it a little bit more. But, you know, I mean, Kevin Keats understands, too, that, like, none of this matters if they don't just keep winning. Like, it doesn't yeah. – it's all irrelevant if they don't keep winning. They don't have the Virginia Tech game. It is what it is. Maybe they would schedule a game, but I doubt that they're going to go out of their way to try to schedule one that, you know, helps them a ton or anything like that. I think he I, – I would I would honestly not be shocked if he just leaves things the way they are. Yeah, the, when the news came out today that Virginia Tech's game against NC State on Saturday was going to be canceled because of Virginia Tech's contact tracing issues that knocked out what was supposed to be tonight's game against Louisville, there was a brief moment of, all right, well, you know, do you try to like play another game that might help you out or do you just put all your eggs in the ACC tournament basket? And I think at this point, uh, given the five in a row, it's probably a good opportunity for them to just kind of treat this as the final game of the season and then just get ready for whatever presents itself at the ACC tournament. Because I think there's a separate conversation of who exactly we're going to see in Greensboro, which we can get to in just a little bit. I think the focus, though, after their pretty thorough win at, at Notre Dame, and I understand that Notre Dame has some struggles, and I know there's a general attitude out there of, hey, you know, let's look at the teams that NC State has actually beaten in this five-game. Oh, who cares? Let's look at hey. who the rest of the ACC beats on a game-in, game-out basis. Well, that's issue number one. Yeah, let's look at everybody else and the inconsistencies throughout when it comes yeah. to teams, right? And also, you can't just say, well, look at the teams they've beaten. They got a Q1 win on the road at Virginia Tech. You can't just like magically wave that one out of the conversation to kind of make whatever point you want to make. Why can't we just say that Kevin Keats and that team have done a hell of a job ever since a pretty miserable January yeah. And then the low point against Duke where, I mean, Duke just ran away with that game. We've talked about this with the football season in general, and you can kind of see this at spots with uh, within the ACC for basketball, whether it's a player opting out. Uh, we, we've seen this a couple different places, whether it was at Duke with Jalen Johnson or at Pitt, right? Uh, teams like Boston College that you can just tell they're trying to get to the end of the season, right? NC State went in the opposite direction. They regrouped. You easily could have just said, screw it. Instead, they're plugging away, and I think they've been rewarded with good play, including with the freshmen and including with the with the vets. I mean, even guys like Jericho Helms have stepped up. Manny Bates has stepped up. You've seen more play, better play out of DJ Funderburg. And Shaq Moore and Cam Hayes had a pretty good outing today, too. I've just been impressed with what this Wolfpack team's been able to do. I've got to say, it's pretty wild, all things considered, that – of the three triangle teams that were used to two of them playing their best basketball in March, only one of them <laughs> currently is, um, you know, it, and, and we've seen NC state, I think it hasn't been the straightest arc, I guess to, no. to, you know, but they are ever since the Devin Daniels injury, they've just kind of steadily gotten better. They had the one loss against Duke as big loss. Mm -hmm. We understand that, but like they've just kind of kept improving and kept plugging away and their freshmen have, followed like a natural uh, progression too, which we also haven't yeah. seen with the other triangle teams. We've seen some days they're here, some days they're here and, and, and States freshmen, they had their moments early in the season, but for the most part, they've kind of followed a more traditional arc to the season too, of like just steadily getting better as it goes along before they're really ready to, to go. And they're, they're great right now. They're all playing great. Now the unfortunate thing for NC state, and I don't know where this qualifies. I, sometimes Brownlow, I feel like you have to do a, a follow up to your NC state stuff podcast. Because NC State's key games that could help differentiate them in the bubble conversation have been wiped out because of their own contact tracing or other teams dealing with contact tracing. Now, if you want to bring up the Clemson overtime loss as a missed opportunity, I'm here for it. 
if you want to talk about how that Miami loss was Clemson loss part two, totally get that as well. But they've missed out on some opportunities to improve their resume because of forces that were out of their control. Georgia Tech. I'm not saying they beat Georgia Tech. I'm saying that's a missed opportunity. You can add UConn, I believe, went to that mix as well. UConn, Michigan uh, in the yeah. ACC Big Ten yeah. Challenge. It'd be a good right? loss. <laughs> yeah, it would be. It would be considered that. But yes. even with an ACC, you don't have Georgia Tech, you don't have Louisville, and now you don't have this Virginia Tech game, which they obviously could have used on Saturday. And you can't spend too much time thinking about that. And I'm sure that Kevin Keats is trying to make that point to his team. And that's why I think that next week is going to be the focus. Win as many games as you can in Greensboro. And then just kind of leave it to chance with the uh, with the selection committee. Either way, if I'm a state fan, even if they don't make the NCAA tournament, I would still come away with how they close out the season. Pretty damn impressed. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And it's interesting. I mean, I wonder how differently, if at all, the committee will judge teams this year. And I, I guess not at all, right? Because they've spent most of the year just sort of pretending COVID is like a minor inconvenience rather than, you know, but there are teams across the country, I think, that have had games scheduled that they would, that certainly would have helped them, yeah. um, you know, and, and they haven't been able to play them. And, and, you know, like, for instance, North Carolina's strength of schedule, I think, is still very high. Um, they missed out on some games that would have maybe helped that even get higher. And NC State's is not as high as it could have been because, you know, the way that the schedule shook out and the way that it was already made up to begin with, combined with the games that were canceled, they had to play teams that almost hurt them, you know, net-wise to play and beat uh, in, you know, Pitt and, and BC. So, like, you know, and then, you know, obviously it doesn't help to lose Miami, but that's whatever. You know, it's just – it's one of those things where it's like I don't know how you can possibly – be fair is the wrong word, and I guess you can't. No, but. You, you, and that's the thing. Like, I had a question today about the ACC tournament and the NCAA tournament, but specific to the ACC tournament, hey, what happens if a team doesn't part, doesn't play? Like, they're scheduled to play, and they don't they can't show up for whatever reason. Does the team move on? Like, yeah, it's a no contest. It's like, doesn't that create, like, a double buy situation? I'm like, yeah, it possibly does. But well, that's, hey, that's a, that one's a little different to me because well, like, I'm just there's saying, nothing like, the it, opponent can do about it. Right. But I, I bring that up as a larger point in that if we get too wrapped up in fairness in this season, you're just going to drive yourself crazy. There's been nothing necessarily yeah, no. fair about this. And I think we, to kind of transition to what happened with Virginia Tech and the missed opportunity that NC State has, I think... You know, as teams like NC State or a team like Duke, possibly even North Carolina, who really needs the ACC tournament to solidify any sort of positions, we're going to have to have an honest conversation about how many teams show up in Greensboro. I know we've alluded to it in previous panic rooms, but I think what happened with Virginia Tech today is going to be a preview to what happens with some teams for next week. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not saying... That Virginia Tech is, you know, making up their issues or they're trying to duck NC State or whatever it is. It's just that what we've noticed is in a pattern of you can you can you can put a team out there if you need to put a team out there is what I'm getting at. I mean, I still can't get over the fact that Boston College's administration wanted Boston College to play a game with four scholarship players and a bunch of scout team guys. Right. Remember, that game was canceled against Florida State because Florida State had their own COVID issues. You also notice some some of the patterns, too, like Florida State. Most of their COVID pause games have been road games. Right. So I think in this case, too, Virginia Tech was on the road. So I, I can envision a scenario where some teams just kind of say, look, man, we got contact tracing issues and we don't want to risk it. And we'll see you in Indianapolis. Yeah, I mean, I think because I know at times we've talked about teams that are bad skipping it. I don't mm -hmm. think that that's as likely to happen. Actually, I know at least Miami, I know Jim Laranega was like, as long as we got six healthy guys, we're, we're going to be there. Um, so I don't think it's going to be as common as you think. But I also, yeah, I mean, that's the interesting wrinkle to me. Um, I don't know what's going on at Virginia Tech. I have no idea. No. Um, but, like, would it make sense? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it would. I don't know that it would hurt them to go play there, especially since they haven't played in 32 days, though. That's the thing. I just – I think what makes sense to us sometimes is maybe not always what makes sense to the coaches. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes. I don't – I it doesn't make any sense to me for Miami to go finish their season in the ACC tournament. I wouldn't really feel like it if I were them, but it seems like they're about to, you know? So, yeah. like, I, I think it's it, – I understand what you're saying, and we, we haven't heard anything from the ACC either. We have no idea what's going on. Well, we have no uh, idea. 
Gilio <laughs> Gilio likes to use this example a lot on the show where um, he likes to point out that the Clemson Notre Dame game, Trevor Lawrence missed the game. One player were were to believe that with contact tracing, nobody was around Trevor Lawrence leading up to that game. The the point being, you can you can make the contact tracing as big or as small in scope as you need it to be. And there is there is some prevailing thought within ACC circles without any real proof, but there is some thought, not the full on like Dabo, they're ducking us, that kind of stuff. It's just being how cautious do you want to be? That that seems to be some of the prevailing thought and well, nobody's really saying anything about it. And to be fair, and this isn't necessarily COVID related, you know, you can make the case too that if you go out of your way to try to play as many games as you can, it hasn't always helped teams to do that. Looking at you, North Carolina, I'm not saying that they did the wrong thing. I'm just saying that, you know, that could be a game ultimately that comes back to bite them um, Mm -hmm. on selection Sunday. So, you know, I get it to an extent um, and I can see why that's being said, Mm -hmm. but I also, I don't know, there's something very off-putting to me about about us saying this about Virginia Tech, considering, like, it's not the same sport, but, like, what Virginia Tech football was saying about ACU. Oh. I'm just well, I'm just putting it out there, both yeah, very serious issues that aren't sports-related, yeah. you know? I know what you're saying. And again, to reiterate my point, I am <laughs> not saying that Virginia Tech isn't going through these things. It's just that we've seen through college basketball and through college football the varying degrees at which what is acceptable and what is not take the North Carolina Miami game, right? I give credit to North Carolina Miami just for just hashing that out and not playing that game after Armando Baycott and others were seen on video with no masks at a at a party, right? Nothing ended up coming out of that. They ended up canceling that game on Monday after Miami had traveled, but Miami was like we're not comfortable doing this. Yeah. They probably could have played that game if they really wanted to, but they didn't, you know, because North Carolina was adamant about how, look, we're doing the things that we need to do. Everything's good right now. So okay, but this game. I'm Miami not going to relitigate that. Like... Miami wasn't comfortable. No, but what I'm saying is that's fine. The, yeah. the, coach, the, the coaches worked that out, okay? Mm-hmm. Like the, the schools were not in any way, shape, or form like bitter about it. And I think that's kind of where we are right now heading into the ACC tournament right. where all the schools are just kind of the attitude of, all right, man, whatever yeah. it is you need to do, Let's just get to the end of the season. That's I just want to make that abundantly clear. Yeah, everybody's I, yeah. just doing what they feel is comfortable for them, and I don't think anybody's really having a problem with it. It just opens up an interesting scenario for the ACC tournament next week. Yeah, and I think too the the thing with the ACC tournament to remember as well is that it's not like bowl games. You know, it's right after the season ends. So like to go to the ACC tournament and finish it there for a lot of teams, like that's whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, it's not. It's not quite like sticking around campus for another month to play a meeting this no. whole game. No. So I don't think that's that's part of the reason too that I don't think we're actually. We might see one, maybe two ACC teams opt out of it, but I don't think we'll see much more than that. Honestly. I set the over under at eleven. <laughs> to opt out? No, of how many teams we're going to have oh, the ACC tournament? I was like, good lord. No, I said, I said, no, 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 no. As uh, as my guy Super Weenie Hut like to joke, uh, it's a state and wake. They're left. That's all that's left for the ACC tournament. Automatic to over. the championship. I'll go over eleven easily. All right, all right. We'll see if what happens. Set it at like twelve and a half. I might sweat it a little bit, but like, all right, all right, all right. I, eleven is an easy over for me. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the ACC Panic Room. We will see you all Saturday post Duke Carolina. Lose your leaves town match. Sorta. We'll see you Saturday.